Now to an exclusive reveal investigation. A Georgia man was left dying in a ditch for more than an hour. Nobody called 911, including a local police chief and a Georgia lawmaker. And a lot of folks are upset tonight. There is growing outrage and calls for accountability tonight on social media. Here's Reveal investigator Faith Abube with that story. This is uh, my work truck. Aaron Key's work truck has become both a symbol of comfort Ugh. and of pain. On one hand, it keeps him busy, so grief doesn't consume him. I mean, I'm a painter. But it also reminds him every day of his older brother, the only one he had. I had plans for my brother. He was wanting to work with me, and he was supposed to go with me the next day. Instead, that day, September 12, 2019, he found out Eric died just three miles from home. A driver hit him while he was riding his bicycle down North Main Street in Cedartown. He's, he's my brother, man. And I wasn't ready for him to go. Polk County Coroner Tony Brazier also wasn't ready for what he would learn about the crash. We realized early on that this was going to be a, a problematic case. Documents obtained by the reveal show the driver Ralph Dover did not stop after hitting Eric. He kept driving with the hood and the passenger side of his windshield caved in. He drove almost a mile before coming to a stop here in this parking lot. But he didn't call police. He didn't call 911. He called a friend who he'd been hanging out with that evening at the county fair. That friend is attorney and Georgia State Representative Trey Kelly. Here's an old picture of the two of them together on Dover's Facebook page. The best case scenario, okay, let's say he told them, I think I hit a dog or a deer. Are you going to drive a mile away and call a lawyer? No. Our investigation shows not only did Dover not call 911, Representative Kelly also did not call 911, despite telling police he saw a bicycle on the side of the road. While Eric laid in the ditch dying, the state representative called Cedartown Police Chief Jamie Newsom at home. I don't understand that. I, I don't. Chief Newsom found out on that call Dover might have hit a person, but the reveal has learned the police chief did not call for medical help either. JJ, good. 21, please, sir. He called his sergeant on the police radio to call him at home. He tried to micromanage a, a 911 call. Not from your home. You can't do that. Eric laid here alone in the ditch in excruciating pain for almost an hour. Polk County 911 told us they could have been at the scene within five minutes. But by this point in time, we've missed the golden hour. When the sergeant eventually arrived, he found Eric's ball cap, then his red bicycle, and then the autopsy report says about 100 feet from the site of initial impact, in the ditch, the officer found Eric barely breathing. This may turn out to be a fatality. If Polk 911 had have gotten this call like it should have gotten, this boy might still be alive today. This mess here stinks to the high heavens. This reeks of the good old boy system. It's just something out of a nightmare that you wouldn't believe that would happen and that, somebody, that nobody would do nothing. The Polk County coroner believes someone could have saved Eric. On the death certificate he wrote, Eric died by homicide hit and run crash. But months since the death, there hasn't been a single criminal charge filed in the case. Not for a hit and run. Not for leaving the scene of an accident. Not for any of it. Dover hasn't responded to our request for an interview, but we caught up with Chief Newsom. It is an ongoing investigation and I'm not at liberty to discuss any of the details. So you are not able to explain why you didn't call medical services right after? It's an ongoing investigation. Representative Trey Kelly had the same response. Why no, didn't you call 911 or ask your, sorry, your friend to call 911? Again, 
uh, I did uh, alert law enforcement. And again, because you, you called of, the police sorry, chief at home. I'm a potential witness in an ongoing investigation. If protocols were broken, Brazier wants them brought to light. I'm not going to allow this to go on on my watch. I'll say whoever behind bars before I see this covered up. A life cut short. Uh, he was very special to me. And a grieving family left with no answers. Aaron wants to know who will be held accountable. I just have one question, why? What was more important than my brother's life? You know what, Faith, there is so much outrage on our website, 11alive.com, and people want to know if these public officials are going to be held accountable. And honestly, at this point, we don't know that. We don't know what's going to happen to this case, but we do know the DA has the investigation on his desk. He says he plans to get it before a grand jury in the next few weeks, but he wouldn't comment on whether they would be looking at just the crash itself yeah. and the circumstances surrounding that mm -hmm. or the circumstances after the crash as well. So, of course, we're waiting to see what happens in this case. And, of course, you guys are going to stay on top of this and we can't wait to see what the follow-up is going to be. Thanks a lot, Faith. Moments ago, Representative Kelly responded to our exclusive investigation after getting several messages. Kelly's statement reads in part, there has been a traumatic accident for everyone out of respect for everyone involved in ongoing investigations. No other statements can be given at this time. My prayers go out to everyone impacted by this accident. To read the full statement there, just go to 11alive.com and click on the As Seen on TV section.